The only hospital in a Colorado mountain town will take hundreds of thousands of dollars in a taxpayer bailout. Talking about St. Vincent Health in Leadville. They struck a deal with county commissioners to get that money. Part of the deal, the hospital board apologizing to Lake County taxpayers and the hospital staff. Commissioners want the hospital to pay back the up to $480,000 bailout. The hospital, though, did not commit to that. Nine News has also learned St. Vincent spent nearly $170,000 on equipment that it can't use because of Leadville's elevation. It's above 10,000 feet. The hospital's interim CEO says some new equipment can't be validated. Our medical expert, Dr. Paul Coley, explains why that means doctors won't use it. You don't want to make assumptions that it's working fine. You want to make sure that you can hang your hat on the fact that when you're getting a reading or when you're getting a, a, you know, a, a, a test that tells you that the equipment is normal, that that test has actually been validated. The CEO of the hospital says it stopped using the equipment once it realized it might not work properly at Leadville's altitude. He says they have since asked for their money back. Let's take a live look outside on this Tuesday afternoon where the clouds are breaking up. We see a little bit of sunshine and that is hope for melting. Yeah, right over the stadium <laughs> too. Sunday, the finale coming up for the Denver Broncos. Kathy's with us now taking a look at how this first week of January is shaping up weather-wise. Oh my goodness, it's been an active weather pattern as we kick off this new year. Tom, we are above average for snowfall in Denver. We have not been able to say that this early in the season for years, but I think we're all ready for warmer weather and some sunshine. So a little bit of a glimpse of sunshine out there and blue sky today, but not enough to melt off the one, two or three inches of snow that many of you received last night with the storm that's tracking east away from Colorado as we speak. Travel has been pretty difficult on I-70 today and the mountains bracing for yet another storm and round of snow. Temperatures today were cold. I think we made it to 31 in downtown Denver. We're now back down to 23 degrees. A chilly afternoon and those southeast winds on the back side of this system, keeping the low cloud deck in the stratus, the fog and really just making it feel and look a whole lot colder than it certainly uh, should be for this time of year. And we're concerned for more snow in the high country. Avalanche danger is high. We have an avalanche warning out through five o'clock. Very unstable conditions up there and more snow coming. A winter weather advisory goes out for the mountains for another three to seven inches of snow. This is part of a Pacific storm system that's bringing record rain and snow to California. That system is headed here for the front range. We're starting to see some drying. We'll start to see some clearing overnight, but those headed into the high country in the next day or two need to prepare for winter driving conditions. As we start a slow warming trend here in Denver, the mountains again bracing for wind and snow, and that's going to make travel up there very difficult. But once you get there, some of the best skiing and snowboarding conditions of the season are set to be part of our extended forecast with all of the recent snow up there. So pretty amazing. I think we're going to get a little bit of a break. Kim and Tom here from the cold and snow, and I think uh, everybody's excited about that. Yeah, mountains get what they want. If you can get there, as you said, yep. we get what we want. Yep, it's all good. OK, thanks, Kathy. Today, Arapahoe County Public Health employees arrived at a brand new health department for work today. Tri-County Health officially dissolved at the end of 2022. Now Douglas, Adams and Arapahoe counties are operating on their own independent health departments. Arapahoe County officials view this as a new opportunity to step up for their residents. For Arapahoe County, um, when Douglas County chose to start its own health department and then when Adams County also declared that it would start its own health department, really left Arapahoe County with no choice. And we took the opportunity to say this is this is our chance to really dig in and, and build the best health department that we can for the county and for the residents of Arapahoe County. Adams County is also onboarding employees today for their new health department. It's the first health department to be specific to the county in 75 years, and today marks its first day of operation. Today, men in the sports world continue to pray for Buffalo Bills safety Demar Hamlin. This after the cardiac incident during last night's Monday night football game. One person in particular hoping for a full recovery, Denver Broncos cornerback Damari Mathis. The two of them were teammates for four years in college at Pittsburgh. Back in 2019, they teamed up to tackle one of Mathis's future teammates here, KJ Hamler. Clifford, blitz comes, gets it out. Catch made by Hamler. He stretches and fights. He'll be marked about a yard short. Mathis stopped him. It's fourth down. Clock running. Penn State has the three timeouts. 
Yeah, along with his teammate DeMar Hamlin. Now, Adam Benini from our sister station in Buffalo is in Cincinnati and now has the latest on Hamlin's condition as well as what's next for his teammates. Hi, this is uh, Adam Benini outside the University of Cincinnati Medical Center where several developments with regard to DeMar Hamlin have taken place today. First and foremost, uh, his condition. The Bills safety still listed in critical condition here. The Bills confirming that with a statement uh, this afternoon. They had uh, done the same at around uh, 2 a.m. saying he had in fact suffered cardiac arrest during the first quarter of last night's game uh, against the Cincinnati uh, Bengals. So his condition remains the same under sedation as we understand it. No further update on that front. We did hear from the family in the form of a statement uh, giving thanks to the outpouring of support really across the country, the donations that continue to pour in to Hamlin's toy uh, and community charity, which as of this afternoon exceeded 4.6 million dollars uh, and rapidly growing thanking the first responders uh, at the game site thanking the medical professionals uh, here at this hospital along with the bills and the bengals organizations also many fans bills bengals uh, other fans wearing different nfl jerseys showing up here a makeshift uh, vigil site uh, along with a candlelight vigil uh, expected here this evening. And as for the resumption of the game itself, once again, that game uh, suspended after Hamlin collapsed in the first quarter last night. NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell has decided that game will not resume here in Cincinnati this week, perhaps at some other time. No changes to the week 18 schedule at this point. So the Bills are set to host the New England Patriots on Sunday, a one o'clock kickoff Eastern time at Highmark Stadium. That is, of course, subject to change, but what would be the regular season finale remains in place. That is the latest from here in Cincinnati uh, with DeMar Hamlin, the Bill safety, again, still in critical condition. For Nine News, I'm Adam Benini. Adam, thanks. You know, he's talking about the NFL announcing they weren't going to replay the game this week. And, and many people are, you know, it's, it's, it may be impossible to replay that game at any point. Right. What the league does, it's all secondary, of course, to DeMar Hamlin's health. But uh, you also have to wonder about the Buffalo Bills playing their regularly scheduled game this week. I just, you, I cannot get the faces of those players out of my head as well and how long they stood on that field and the trauma that they suffered emotionally. And I know that you see players hurt all the time. Right. They are used to not, seeing that in see this CPR. kind of a game. They yeah. not do not see this. So it, it, it will be very much dependent on, on DeMar Hamlin's condition. Yeah. Uh, if DeMar Hamlin is doing well, uh, that, that could be we could see things move forward. Sure. If Lamar Hamlin is not doing well, I mean, we really don't know yet, and it's hard, you certainly don't want to speculate, but if he's not doing well, uh, there are a lot of uh, players, not just Buffalo Bills or Cincinnati Bengals, there are I'm a lot saying, of players around the league who yeah. might, might be not ready to play a football game for a little while, and you know there were 70,000 fans who witnessed that as well, and on the millions of us who were watching on television and, and suddenly stuck in a very difficult two hours. Uh, and, and you, I know I sat there uh, very, uh, not critical at all, but I was very uh, interested in how broadcasters managed it as well, because you're suddenly thrust into a completely odd place you couldn't have anticipated, whether it was Joe Buck and Troy Aikman or whether it was Susie Kolber and Adam Schefter and Booger McFarland back in the studio. And then later, Scott Van Pelt, who I thought he and Ryan Clark really seemed to hit the They really the did. Yeah, but it was... It was very raw and very, and, and you could, you were experiencing it with them. You couldn't stop watching. Uh, yeah, and obviously we're, we're thinking of DeMar Hamlin, but you, you're also watching people try to react on camera live, and we've sat in that chair sometimes, and uh, this was, was a very unique night. So the, the idea is, is what happened to DeMar Hamlin is something called commotio cordis which a lot of us had never even heard of. Um, but that's why we're going to talk to our Nine News medical expert to learn more about this phenomenon. She's also a cardiac expert, so that's good for us. And the first steps that the responders did in this kind of case and what difference that might have made. Plus, more on Jeremy Renner's injuries, as he also remains in critical condition, this following a snow plowing accident.